Hello folks, this is Janik, so how's everybody doing today? I am here with the deck profile, Blue Eyes Variant 2014. Um, this is a deck dedicated to the Blue Eyes White Dragon, um, Beating with Eyes of Blue. It's a spellcaster. It's light, but that is, that's not the important part. The important part is its effects. Its effects are as cheap as follows. When you target this card from an attack, you can negate the attack, and if you do change this card's power position, then you can special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand deck or graveyard. Hand deck or graveyard? So I can't even attack this chick without seeing blue eyes on the field, and I don't want to run no 3000 beater early in the game, right? That's hard to deal with. Oh, I think I'll just use a spell. You know, I think I'll just use Book of Moon or Raikou or something like that. Well, here's, there's good news and bad news with that. The good news is, is that your effect will not be negated. But the bad news is, if you even target this chick with, an, with a card effect, she will get blue eyes out regardless. So, overall, you really don't want to do much when dealing with this chick other than use, use multi-destructional cards that don't target. Or cards with effects that don't target, you know. So, yeah. Man's Eyes Blue is actually cheap, and she also helps to get out even an even more powerful monster, but I'll go into that later on in his profile. The next card I have is the White Stone of Legend. By sending this card to the graveyard by any means possible, you'll get a Blue Eyes free to your hand. That's always good. Searching is always a plus, especially for the card you want. Um, right, of, right of the Storm Winds, pretty much I use him as a cards of constantness target or or synchro pretty much for a tune for tuner um i use them as a, a tuner for a synchro and i really use this effect but his effect does come in handy like if a monster if you have monsters play defense so you can go just to a blue eyes and pierce their monster so you can cause more damage that's always fair makes the game and faster blue eyes white dragon of course three of them it's always fair Red Eyes Dark Metal Dragon, a must for any dragon deck. Pretty much um, special summon this card for free by removing one piece of dragon you control. And after that, you can special summon one dragon monster except himself. But then you're going to use one of this card in your deck. But you can special summon a dragon regardless of level, regardless of attribute from your hand or your graveyard. So look how cheap that is. Um, I decided to add a little bit of Heratics to this deck. I added two Heratics. Specifically, I added Tefnuit and I added Asset because it's a really cool combo I like to go into. Like Special Summon, um, excuse me, Special Summon um, Tefnuit and then Normal Summon Asset by tributing Tefnuit, therefore giving me a blue eyes from the deck because Tefnuit was tributed. Then he said had space its effect by copying the level of a normal dragon type monster I control on my field. Uh, essentially level eight, so I can maybe go into rank eight plays. And finally, Kadomo Dragon. Kadomo Dragon is like when you attack me, a dragon will be coming on my field. I hope it's not blue eyes. But the only only downside to that is that I can't switch some any of the monsters except for dragon types. Nor can I conduct my battle phase. The turn I activate this effect. Not only can I activate one of these once per turn, so I can't have two on the field and get two dragons for free. No, it doesn't work like that. And that's the monsters. We're going to spells and traps now. Um, first off, spells trade in because dumping blue eyes in the grave, you get two cards is fair. You know, if the blue eyes is dead in your hand, it's always fair to get two more cards so you can get a better play. Cards of Constance is the same thing, but it works for the tuners, but it works better with White Summon Legend because usually, sometimes, you can end up drawing a trade-in, and White Stone will automatically give you a blue eye, so that's a free plus two right there. Um, Silver's Cry, pretty much a quick play spell, a quick play um, Call of Line or Monster Reborn. Well, not really magic book, but uh, special summon the grave kind of card that works well with blue eyes since, since the only dragon normal taunts 
since it's the only dragon normal monster I control. The only, only one I have in my entire deck, so yeah, I think that's fair. And plus, just because it's a quick play, I could play it during the battle phase of my turn, just to finish the game. One of the, one of the ways to end the game, actually. We also have Dragon Shrine, dumping um, a Blue Eyes, and plus a White Stone will give me another Blue Eyes to my hand. You know, to thin out my deck, that's always good. Um, White Stone, Wing Beat of a Giant Dragon, like, say if I have like a Tefnu, like this card really works well with Tefnu it, because Tefnu is a special summon itself if your opponent controls a monster. So you get to play, use special summon Tefnu it, play Wing Beat. Um, wipe the back row, then start summon Tefnu again, and you actually can go into your plays without worrying about back row. Dark Hole is a staple, and two MSTs because of staples. Now for the traps. I run two Castle of Dragon Souls because this card is really fair. First of all, it can, um, first of all, I thought it was only for dragons, but no. The cost is to remove a dragon, but to be honest, you can target one monster you control and it gains 700 attack. Now, this card I think can also work during damage set. And um, not only that, this card actually works well with Maiden, considering I don't have a lot of cards to target with her, her with. So this works with Maiden. I give her 700 uh, attack. Her effect activates and I get a blue eyes to the field immediately. Fair. And also to remove and to give your monster so much attack is a once per turn effect. And also, if this card is set from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon one of your best monsters to the field immediately. So if one of your monsters got bottomless, you'll be sure to get it back with this card. Phoenix Chain. Phoenix Chain. Two chains is always a necessary must. Cause, and this is what I have at the moment. I don't have Breakthrough Skill because Breakthrough Skill is actually pretty pricey and people are stingy with that shit. So I don't have to worry about that. If not Breakthrough Skill, here's a substitute Breakthrough Skill right here. It's a card called... Memory Loss is a common card. Pretty much what it does, same thing as Breakthrough Skill, except you can't use it twice. Pretty much, you want to face a monster... When a face of attack monster your opponent control has just activated their effect, negate that effect, and put it in defense mode. That's fair. Good against those BLSs, those arcs, those um, Exeter Knights. Yeah. Good for things like that. Uh, Mirror Force, because Mirror Force is the target. And yes, I like doing this to my opponents so much because they love setting up their field with a whole bunch of big ass monsters. And if you don't have nothing to stop it, well, oh well, your field's gone. So I'm warning because this stops every kind of summoning possible. And that's always fair. 2000 is a price, but hey, I don't run Soul Charge, so I have to worry about that problem. Bottomless because it doesn't target. Same thing, same thing with Torrential. But this destroys and removes, so yeah, that's always a plus. And compulsive wave evacuation device because it sends back cards that are really annoying, like cards that get their own destruction, things like that, and cards that can't be just yeah, pretty much. This is a versatile card. It could be used defensively and it could be used offensively. And that is just that is the blue eyes deck for you folks. For the extra deck now, I want to go into that now. Azure Eyes Silver Dragon is the secondary boss monster of the Blue Eyes variant deck that I have here. Um, pretty much, when this card is supposed to summon dragon type monsters you currently control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects until the end of your next turn. That guarantees protection against cards like, you know, Torrential, Dark Hole, um, like, target, being targeted, <clears throat> you can't target with anything, no Book of Moon, no Deepers, nothing like that, which is always good. Uh, pretty much is a guaranteed protection for a turn, and also during the standby phase, I can target one normal monster in my graveyard for some of that target. And mind you, he has 3,000 defense, which is actually hard to get over. Just as Redox, when you have a Redox in defense mode, you can't get over that shit. So yeah, I like putting my Azure Eyes in defense mode and bringing out the blue eyes, and then do all the attacking with the blue eyes. 
I run two of them. I have, I'm not running three at the moment. Uh, Black Rose Dragon. Do not have room for a third of reserves, but let me go. Black Rose Dragon is fair. Pretty much blowing up the field is a must, especially when you are in a tight situation. Another, <clears throat> as an added bonus, I would advise Black Rosing when you have this card, this card on the field, because um. If you have like a blue eyes or a red eyes toxic metal that you banish from play in order to use this effect, black rose to field, field's gone, nothing, nothing getting from the field now. This comes back, uses this effect, especially some of the blue eyes from the, you know, the graveyard or from the hand, and you know, you just get in there. Um, Michael the Light Sworn Lord. Michael the Light Sworn Lord is not just restricted to Light Sworn, it's restricted to any deck using Tuner and Light's Monsters, and as you can see, I can. I, that works for me, so yeah. And also to pay a thousand life was to banish a car I banish a car, not destroy it, banish it. So cars need to get to destruction. Yeah. This is also fair. Banish a car but the thing about it is milling you don't want to mill at yourself, so just be careful when you pull the when you bring this out. It has twenty six attacks, so that's not bad. Start a spark dragon for protecting your um your dragons. Including itself. Also, it's also a light, so I, I think I should be honest in this deck now. Now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, Sahemoth, because, you know, for just, to, just to get monsters out of the way that are really annoying. And that if you just want them to waste their effect on it, just, there you go. We have Sardis Dragon, because Sardis Dragon is going to get all destruction effects and bring itself back. That's always fair. Scrap Dragon, just because it has 20 hundred attack and it can destroy things, which is pretty good. As well as Helios. Helios, because I run level 8, so why am I not running Thunder and Dragon? I just realized that now. <laughs> Thunder and Dragon. Yeah, run it. Thunder and Dragon uses two level 8 normal monsters and pretty much you could blow up the... You could blow up all the monsters in the field except itself, so I'll just sit there and just, you know, attack. I forgot all about Thunderend. <laughs> but, uh, Helios, you can pretty much tribute any number of monsters from your hand and outside of the field. The minimum is one, and destroy equal number of cards in the field. I usually target the back row, because back row is a problem. And, of course, they have, like, like, you know, a lot of monsters, just reduce the number of monsters. It usually works well with the other the rags I have in my deck, so I'll get, you know, if I still have blue eyes in the, the graveyard of the deck, I can just special summon it and go into another rank 8 play, because that's always cool. Um, Thunder the Dragon already explained them. Thelgran, this is another good card. Quite pricey in real life, but it's a really good card. It, um, pretty much it can protect itself, and it can be, it can be used defensively and offensively, just like Compulse. You can use it on your opponent's monster, so you can negate their effects and then attack them. And then they're not affected by anything else, so they can't protect them with safe zone or nothing, so it's like, fair. Unless they save something beforehand, but usually you would like, this can work, and this effect can work during the IFS turn also as a light, so you can honest with it. Um, I'm a 15 given puppet because people like to exceed a lot, and for exceeds that can be destroyed, you know, just regularly, this will work well because you can use it up to twice per turn during your main phase one. Keep that in mind, main phase one only. Just use the effect and burn them. A good game winner right there. Number 15, number 15 for game. I don't have a cowboy, so I have this guy. Um, I love Tachyon Dragon, just the way he looks. Looks so cool. And if you are foolish enough to activate an effect while I already have activated this effect during the start of the battle phase, I will get an additional attack. I will get an additional attack of 1,000. Plus, I can also attack on um, twice, a second time. I mean, and that is my deck, folks. Well, it's very for 2014 July format. And if you see these little cards down here in the side deck, these are the cards I was thinking about, but I decided to take them out. Kyber Man, because it's Kyber Man. You see how he's smirking because it has the blue eyes in his hand. Yeah, but he's restricted because if I have this card in my hand, I have no blue eyes. He's just dead in my hand. 
Um, Silver's Cry, I thought about having two, but in this case, I really don't need it simply because the Rag Special Summon Blue Eyes for me, Maiden Special Summon Blue Eyes for me, the fucking um, Red Eyes Dark Metal Special Summon Blue Eyes for me, um, Azure Eyes Silver Dragon Special Summon Blue Eyes for me, and Castle Dragon Souls Special Summon Blue Eyes for me. So there's no reason to keep High Level Eyes Special Summoning in here. So I just need to work on a way to get around Ophion. Good luck. I need to get luck. Good luck with that, you know? But, um, and there's Ancient Fairy Dragon. Ancient Fairy Dragon simply because I think that people have actually wow, field spells. I can just put this in there. And this is also a light, so I can also get honest with it. And, you know, speaking of honest, you should just put that shit in the deck right now. Why the fuck am I even wasting time? Mm -hmm. I'll just take out one of these and put you in there because you're fair. Um, honest is always fair. But, uh, and that is my deck, folks. Just, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions, please leave them in the, in the box below. Um, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to my channel to so show me some support. I am trying to show myself and trying to be out there with Yu-Gi-Oh! and trying to promote the game and, you know, teach others how decks work and how this game can be fun. And it's not all about being a douchebag and being the, the best and having the top deck and all this shit because overall it's a game and the game is meant to have fun. Until then, this is Janek Soul saying thank you for watching and have a good day.